bright green hats. Don't be afraid of them. They are here to do a job to observe and monitor. Be respectful of the job that they're here to do today. After our speaker portion, we're going to march ourselves to the Idaho Supreme Court building where our six-week ban lawsuit currently sits. And then we're going to come back to the park across the way for some community time with each other. But first, we have some folks here who spent some time preparing thoughts for us, and I'm so excited to hear from them all. First up, we have Anai Bell from the Northwest Abortion Access Fund. Anai is a parent of a two-year-old, a student at NNU. She's on the board of directors for NWAF. She's extremely passionate about reproductive health care and abortion access. Let's give her our attention to hear about why abortion funds are more important now than ever. How are you all doing today? As we navigate through these unsettling times, I want to share why abortion funds are vital in the conversation around abortion access and reproductive health care. Here at the Northwest Abortion Access Fund, we continue to see an increase in number of individuals traveling out of state to get the necessary health care they need. All women and trans and non-binary folks must have access, the access and the autonomy to decide when they want to become parents and how they want to be parents. Yet barriers such as transportation, child care, class and social status, and so much more make abortion access difficult for people who want or need to end their pregnancies. Access to safe abortions without additional barriers is a human right. A right that every individual deserves. For many years prior to now, NWAP has been helping pregnant people by funding their abortion procedures, coordinating travel, lodging, and a myriad of other logistics for individuals who need to go to their local abortion clinic for care or are traveling out of state to access abortion care. Our hotline is staffed by compassionate and pro-abortion volunteers who are prepared to support our callers in any capacity they need and be able to receive the support they need. We will not stop doing this work. We are not going anywhere. <laughs> if Roe and Wade is returned, this work, if Roe and Wade is returned, overturned. This work is for the people, by the people, and funded by donors like you. We will not stop being, we will not stop to work, break down barriers to access abortion and reproductive health care for all communities across Idaho and the Northwest. As a parent, I want to ensure that my child can choose what's best for them in, when it comes to parenting and their reproductive health. Everyone deserves to, access to free and informed health care. Because abortion is health care. Abortion bans are racist. Abortion bans are classist. Abortion bans are deadly. They're sexist. And abortion is an essential and a human right. Just in 2021, we had over 17, 18, 1,700 callers uh, contact the Northwest Abortion Access Fund to help with their abortions, with the majority of them coming from Idaho. People call us because we remain the experts when it comes to connecting them with compassionate care. Abortion funds are a safeguard to abortion access, and there is no other network in the breadth of the shared integrational knowledge and expertise. Overall, nothing has changed. Abortion is still legal as of today, and we are here to support people in accessing abortion no matter what. Thank you so much, Anai. Let's hear it for Anai again. Next up, we have Alexa Reutemann, who's here speaking with us today with the added support of her mother and her fiance, who are in this incredible crowd. Alexa is a volunteer leader with Planned Parenthood and a pro-abortion activist, and she's here with us today to share her powerful abortion story. Alexa. Wow, it's getting really beautiful out right now. It's so good to see all your faces. Something I love about myself is that I have had the experience in the act of choosing to have an abortion. 
At the age of 23, I felt disconnected to my adult body. I was still trying to figure out how my breasts, vagina, and other soft parts were allowed to move in this world. It turns out that those parts are soft and strong, and they are mine to move. After the abortion, my body held, healed, and created a path to knowing myself deeper. Since then, I have lived an intentional and loving life. I am not empty, I am full. I am not devastated, I am thriving. For the past 49 years, we believe progress has been made through Roe v. Wade, and it is important to remember that that reality has only taken place for some of us. Many folks had long hour drives to clinics which made seeing a physician impossible. Many of our kin do not have the love and strength of family and friends, but rather embarrassment and uneducated judgments. Many are unable to afford the costs financially and socially. Furthermore, the politicians and courts who are making the decisions, that is not theirs to make. I propose that we start using the power of the word. Start saying abortion. If you are at liberty and feel safe to say it openly and wildly, do so. It is not a bad word. <laughs> Say the word vagina because it is a beautiful force. <laughs> Talk about sex because it exists and should not be synonymously used with shame. <laughs> These things are a part and belong in this world. Next, we should use the power of choice choice beyond the act of abortion. We have choice in the way we are connected and how we see those who are different from us. We can choose empathy over fear. We can choose to listen to our kin rather than second guessing them. If we are going to, lit, going to be in community, then act like it. We must take care of each other the way we are asking and needing us to. Please be kind to one another. Listen, learn, support, and fiercely love with your kin. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa, for those powerful words. Now, like I've said, we're honored today to have some of our elected officials with us. And I have to say, the first time I ever heard Representative Nekachea speak about her family's history with abortion access was such a poignant moment for me and such a reminder about why I am personally in this work. We're so excited to have her here with us today. Please welcome Representative Nekachea. to all you defenders of reproductive rights. Because these rights are so personal, it's natural to think about our own lives and stories first. And today I'm carrying with me a few women, a few specific women in my family. And the first is my great-grandmother. I never got to meet her. She was widowed at 25 with three children. And I can only imagine her desperation when she got remarried to a man who turned out to be abusive. When she, came, when she became pregnant, she knew she did not want to have her abuser's child. She attempted a self-induced abortion and died from the resulting infection just a few blocks from here at St. Luke's. Among the orphans she left behind, was my grandmother, who faced a tough life. She knew joy, 
but her life would have been much easier with her mother in it. That brings me to my mom, who taught me early on that forcing involuntary pregnancy on someone is always wrong. My earliest political memory is my mother bringing me to a rally at this very spot. I was 10, and we were protesting the anti-choice legislation that Governor Andrus ultimately vetoed. She is out here today, and she will keep showing up as long as it takes. I'm also thinking of my daughters who are here today and who are poised to have fewer rights than the generation before them, as they will lose rights that have been guaranteed for 50 years. Finally, I'm thinking of my ob mother-in-law who managed a clinic in Peru where most abortion is a crime. That doesn't mean fewer abortions, it means desperate people pursue unregulated abortions and her clinic had a regular stream of patients who needed medical care as a result. I'm so grateful that Planned Parenthood and neighboring states are preparing to serve Idaho patients safely. Yeah. And this shows the cruelty and the absurdity of Idaho's laws. Yeah. It is immoral that the economic class that can afford missed work and a trip across the border will have reproductive rights that are being stripped away from everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. People without means, disproportionately people of color, will face huge barriers to care in the grim reality that awaits us. Yes. And overturning Roe v. Wade <laughs> not their end game, it's just the beginning. Yeah. I sat across from the House State Affairs Chairman on a news show last week. He said he would now hear bills banning emergency contraception and would consider hearing bills to ban IUDs. Yeah. I think he heard the outrage, he went viral and after about a million views of the clip, he backpedaled a bit. Uh, but I am not comforted. No. The supermajority in the Idaho legislature is hostile toward contraception. On, on the day the House passed a bill to provide cash rewards for rapists' family members if the victim has an abortion, they also killed a bill that would allow you to get six months worth of birth control at a time. And it's disturbing that a leg legislator thinks it should be up to him to parse out what acceptable birth control is. Yeah. Our family planning decisions are nobody else's business, but I will say this, they can pry my IUD out of my cold, dead uterus. Yeah. I am very much with you. What we cannot be is defeated. Then they will take away even more rights. Today is the beginning. I need you to vote. If you are not registered, find folks here who will help you get registered. But that's not enough. I need you to register others to vote. I need you to knock on doors, make phone calls, and donate to elect candidates who will protect your freedom. The Supreme Court does not have our back anymore. We can only turn this around at the ballot box. We can and we will together. Thank you very much. Wow, 
thank you so much, Representative Nekachea. <laughs> Next up, join me in welcoming Julissa Melendez, fresh off her internship with Planned Parenthood. She is such an incredibly strong, passionate advocate who's working each day to change our political atmosphere on the ground. She embodies our future. Let's welcome Julissa. Wow, wow, what a beautiful sight. Oh my goodness. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Eating the mic, there we go. It is kind of crazy at only 19 years standing here in front of you all. and so much of my rights have already been removed at only 19. Just like Representative Nicochea said, her daughters are being born. They're over here, out here, and not as much rights as we had. For me, for my speech, I wanted to take it a different perspective, something I have not seen quite a lot. Being very proactive, pro-choice, is a Hispanic community. <laughs> I'm sure that many of the Hispanic folks relate and understand that abortion is a very limited word. It is not very used and it is overseen quite a lot. How do you tell your Hispanic mother you advocate for not the unborn, but rather for the woman whose uterus is being held in court? And is being controlled by the government rather than her own ovaries. And their own ovaries, my apologies. <laughs> what belief system do I want to follow as I age? I kept on asking myself as I kept on getting engaged with Planned Parenthood and the ACLU. This, this is what I want to grow up with! <laughs> and show that they care and have the right people sitting in the right chairs. <laughs> One of my very vivid memories from my internship was <coughs> when we showed up for uh, against the Senate Bill 1309, the fetal heartbeat bill. We were defeated, clearly, but what was very stuck to my mind was the women that were walking alongside me. We were walking down these same stairs, these same stairs, all, of, all the same look on our faces. And then I look to my left and I see Misty already making phone calls. Let's make rallies, let's spread the word. What's the next step? What's the next step we're gonna take? And I look to my right and I see Paige doing the same. The next couple of days, sending emails. Hey y'all, show up. Hey, this is going on. The constant updating was very much necessary. But I knew that day, I kept asking myself, why do I show up? Why, what, what, is, this, what is this all for? Why do we keep fighting? And they gave me the answer that very same day. This. This is why we keep fighting. This! And to grant abortion and to keep it legal and safe. Now, for the closing, I'd like to thank my mother as well. Before getting into all of this advocacy for abortions and for all of the above, <laughs> checks off the list. Um, I told her, I told her, you know, I don't think what they're doing is right. They're not, they should keep it safe and legal. What do you suggest? Would you raise me the same way my grandmother raised you, the same traditional values? Or are you gonna change those? How are you gonna raise me? And she let me speak my mind, and she let me stand in front of all of you today and speak yeah. with every single one of you. Yeah. 
but I thank her. I thank her, and I thank my friends, and every single one of you for showing up and showing me at 19 years old that there is still hope and lots more to go. We are here to stay for good. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing with us, Julissa. Next, we're lucky to have with us Dr. Caitlin Gustafson, who practices. Woohoo! Yeah, let's hear it for medical providers! 